Blake Bortles is trash. Blake Bortles is awful. Blake Bortles, we should have traded for Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy Bridgewater would save this franchise. Eli Manning, that's who we should trade for. Blake Bortles is the worst quarterback in the league. He's the 64th worst quarterback in the league. Blake Bortles is ter truly terrible. Wow, Blake Bortles threw for 388 yards? <sighs> I told you Blake was the boat. Fournette, Fournette goes airborne. He's in. Touchdown, Jaguars. Tip and intercepted by Ramsey to close it out. It's over. The Jacksonville Jaguars have pulled off the upset of the playoffs. What is going on, everybody? It is Tree from Tree Talks here on this beautiful, beautiful victory Monday as the Jaguars took down the New York Jets 31 to 12 last night in a dominant, dominant offensive, defensive, special teams performance. The Jets simply could not keep up with our boys. And we have a lot to talk about. We have some great sheets to hand out. And we have, of course, everyone's favorite segment of the week, the player of the week for the special teams, offense, and defense. So let's not waste any time. I'm Tree from BigJReport.com. This is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus the New York Jets. Week four, recap, position grades, and players of the week. Now we're going to start off how we start off every single week, and we're going to be discussing the special teams. Now as far as the special teams go, the Jags have one of the most efficient kickers in the league in Josh Lambeau. Josh Lambeau, ever since he joined the Jags, uh, I believe during probably week 5, 6 of last season for the Jags, or it might have been like towards the second half of the season, I don't know, I'd have to check. But he is 23 for 23 in field goals since he's came to the Jags, and he notched a 54-yard field goal in this game against the Jets. He was tremendous, he knocked all of his extra points, and he just had one hell of a game. With that being said, getting an A+. Um, a lot of people are thinking that Josh Lambeau is actually going to be passing up Josh Scobie here soon, and I definitely, definitely could see it. I would not be surprised in the slightest bit. Uh, Josh Lambeau's that guy, and he's doing very, very good things for us in Jacksonville. Now let's talk about the man, Logan Cook. Logan Cook had a good game as well. He was pinning him back deep every time he had the opportunity to punt. Uh, they were good punts. You know, he's grown as a player. You know, early on in the season, like the preseason, he was, like, getting some punts to, like, the 30, the 40. That weren't too great. But now, ever since he has a little bit more experience in this league, he has been able to, you know, pin some teams back within the 10, 5-yard line. He had a couple of those. Uh, in the game as well so Logan Cook as well had a great game for the Jags and with that being said we're going to give him an A as well as for the coverage team they really did not return the ball that much so I can't really give them a solid grade but the coverage team for what it's worth uh, did very good as well okay we're going to give Jadon Mickens a grade I'm going to give Jadon Mickens a C because that boy is absolutely wild <laughs> he will take anything it's crazy. It's weird to say. D.D. Westbrook, though, as well. Uh, D.D. Westbrook, I think, should get a B. He did well when he got his opportunity to shine. Uh, and we'll talk about him, obviously, a little bit more. If you watch the game, you know the kind of numbers D.D. Westbrook uh, put up. But, you know, Jano Mickens, man, <laughs> even if the ball was like would just bounce in the air or if it was in the back of the end zone, he's trying to return it. He's trying to catch it. He's trying to do something. You know, when you're wilding out like that, man, it, it's hard to it's hard to be successful. So if, I, if you could please just calm down with that and uh, not do that as much, I would be very, very much thankful for that. All right, now we're going to be diving in to the offense. The offense had a tremendous, tremendous game. Players stood out and definitely uh, performed. So first and foremost, we're going to be talking about the offensive line, the kind of position group that really was the only one that didn't perform too well. Um, AJ Can really got beat like a drum by Leonard Williams on a sack, and I believe they allowed in um, around probably, I think, two or three sacks the Jets got that uh, the offensive line let up. Um, and the the running game wasn't tremendous. As, again, we're, we'll get into the running game here in a little bit. But, you know, the offensive line, they weren't really opening up any holes particularly. They weren't really doing uh, spectacular in the run game or the pass game either. So, uh, for that, the offensive line is going to get a C-. minus. The offensive line is going to have to improve uh, in the coming weeks. I know the loss of Cam Robinson is huge. Um, but we lost AJ Can last week, and we were all kind of waiting for him to come back and hoping that he was going to make a difference. But this week, you know, allowing a sack, which is a big no-no in this league. You know, it's hard when you're when you're an offensive lineman. Trust me, I know. I used to be one. 
um, they only notice the bad things. So, you know, if you minimize the bad things, then, you know, everybody's not going to, everybody's just going to assume you're doing your job and doing well. And uh, unfortunately for our offensive line, they allowed in some sacks. So um, that was very evident that they were not doing a whole lot of good. But still a C minus. I'm not going to give them a D or an F. We still won the game and it was still manageable. So uh, just some improvements that could be made on the offensive line. Now let's talk about the running backs, the running game. So Leonard Fournette was in the first half. He had 11 carries for 30 yards, and then he got pulled due to another hamstring injury. Now I'm getting kind of sick and tired of this whole Leonard Fournette injury saga. And like, okay, I'm just saying too, like Leonard is crazy because you know if he keeps getting injured like this in the way that that boy spends money. Did you see? Did you see how like he rolled up to the stadium with that seven chain and like the outfit he had on him, like? Bro, if you keep spending this money and you keep getting hurt, you're not going to get another contract. So, I mean, like, you probably should uh, learn how to maintain your money a little bit more, bud. But, you know, I've, I've never been that guy. I've never been the guy to hate on Letter Fournette for spending money. Uh, there's a lot of people that actually are and that are actually, you know, about hating Leonard Fournette for spending all of his money. But I'm saying, dude, if you keep getting injured, man, I don't know how, the, how a new contract will really uh, seem. I know he is only in his second year and he has two more years to... Uh, really show out and obviously the rest of this season as well but as far as that goes man TJ Yeldon every time Leonard Fournette goes out TJ Yeldon fills in exceptionally well uh, TJ brings a lot to the pass game that Leonard Fournette doesn't bring uh, as far as screens go and even just you know outside passes Corey Grant as well uh, Corey had a decent game nothing really to write home about TJ Yeldon was mostly the premier back and like I always say I was really kind of hesitant on TJ Yeldon this year because you know he kind of lacks something he lacks the big playability but this year you know he's showing that he has that big playability on the uh, 31 yard touchdown pass the first touchdown um, of the game <clears throat> he went in untouched was not touched and as far as the run game goes uh, he had a, he, he was able to bounce a couple out for uh, big games big gains um, so you know those were the runs that he needed to have but, you know, the offensive line kind of was struggling to open up holes. But, you know, every big run that TJ Yeldon had, he earned. And he made sure that that was, you know, his run. And he made that happen. So, TJ Yeldon had a good game and really kind of revitalized his run game. We're going to give the run game a B. TJ Yeldon had a great game. Really kind of saved the day uh, at the running back position when Leonard Fournette went down. Will TJ Yeldon win his third Offensive Player of the Week from Treb? From Treeb Talk, stay tuned to the end of the video to find out, but he definitely, definitely has a case for it. So the run game getting a B, now we're going to skip on over to the wide receivers. And I know, there's a couple of people that like to comment on these videos and tell me that I'm way too rough, way too hard on Dante Moncrief. And right now is my public apology to Dante Moncrief. Dante, dear Dante Moncrief, I am sorry. You had a great game last week. You got into the end zone. You had over 100 yards receiving. That was terrific. That was spectacular. Congratulations. I appreciate what you are doing for the Jags right now. Now, I think he had a great game. No doubt about that. Uh, I would like to have seen Keelan Cole get involved a little bit more, but I mean, that, that's really nitpicky to say that I would want like other wide receivers to step up more, but because that's really nitpicky. Uh, and, you know, Dante Moncrief didn't lead in reception yards. Oh, no, no, no. D.D. Westbrook. And let me... D.D. Westbrook had 130 receiving yards this game. Let me toot my own horn a little bit. Now, 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 now I understand that number two on this list of my five Jaguars that may surprise you is D.J. Chark. And D.J. Chark, if anything, he had a penalty this game as well. Uh, D.J. Chark has struggled all season, so I'll admit that that was kind of wrong and that was a uh, bad pick for uh, someone to surprise you, but my number two or three, I don't remember, if, I, I, I can't remember what order DJ Chark and D.D. Westbrook were, but I said D.D. Westbrook could lead this team in receiving yards because he's that damn good. He's a for, fucking former Heisman finalist as a wide receiver. They don't grow those on trees. Like, this guy's a talented wide receiver, and I've been saying it. You know, Marquise Lee used to be the dude to run the shallow crosses, the drags, and all that. D.D. Westbrook is now that guy, and D.D. Westbrook is faster than Marquise Lee was. He has better hands than Marquise Lee did. 
D.D. Westbrook is basically Marquise Lee, but a thousand times better. And he went out there and he showed it. And you can see Blake Bortles and him are building that chemistry. And they are doing a very, very good job connecting on that. As well as Dante Moncrief. Dude, that deep ball to Dante Moncrief. I can't even tell you how pretty of a throw that was. That was a dot and a half. It was beautiful. Beautiful throw by Bortles. Beautiful catch by uh, Moncrief. And a beautiful run uh, after the catch as well by Moncrief. And... Like I said, I think that I'd like to see some of these other wide receivers get involved as well. Uh, but if Dante Moncrief and D.D. Westbrook for the rest of the year are wide receivers 1 and 2, I won't be too surprised. But then again, Keelan Cole is also one hell of an athlete, one hell of a player. I definitely won't be surprised if he goes out and gets his. He definitely deserves it. So the wide receivers on the day are going to get an A. This is the best game these wide receivers have played all season long. If we throw an Austin Safarian Jenkins in there as well, he had a good game. He had a couple of catches. Um, you know, we might as well just change the wide receiver category to pass catcher. I think that would be a little bit easier, but definitely an A. And he, uh, ASJ went to the medical tent, but you know, not taking anything away from these wide receivers. There was definitely, definitely, I don't think there was a drop uh, at all this game. You know, these wide receivers definitely stepped it up in that aspect of their game and made sure that they weren't dropping the football and uh, making sure Blake. Had a great day. And last but not least, if you've seen the intro of this video, you know. You already know. We're talking our quarterback. Def I don't know about our quarterback because y'all are some Fairweather Blake Bortles fans, but my quarterback, Blake Bortles, threw a career. I, I was a little shocked this was a career high. I would have thought Blake has already thrown for over 400 yards. It's like, if you told me that he's thrown for over 400 yards at least once in his career, I would have been like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's believable. But a career high, 388 yards. Blake Bortles went out there. He took charge of the offense. He was eluding pressure. He was making sure he's moving up into the pocket to make the right throw. Uh, as well as, like, the, one of the first plays of the game, he ran, like, a 30-yard run. <laughs> But that's only going to help his career average that he's already number three on that all the announcers like to bring up every single time. Uh, before we uh, keep going about Blake, Jeff Fisher is a fucking terrible announcer. Almost as bad as he was as a coach. He was just fucking awful. He's just, oh god, I don't know what brought that out, but I just want to get that out before uh, the video was over. But Blake Bortles had a tremendous, tremendous game. He went out there. He had a great day, career high in passing uh, yards, and I think he threw two touchdowns on the day. He might have only thrown one, honestly. No, he threw two. He threw one to Yeldon and one to uh, Dante Moncrief. So, you know, Blake went out there, did his thing, had a good game. That's my quarterback. You know, and like a lot of people say, if we have good Blake all fucking season, we don't lose a lot of games, but... Unfortunately, that's Blake's Achilles heel is his inconsistency. So hopefully next week when we play the Chiefs, when we need him to be, you know, good Blake, he goes out there and he is good Blake. That's going to be such a good game. I can't wait to cover that game this week. Oh, God, it's going to be such a good game. But Blake Bortles on the whole is going to get an A for me. Blake Bortles had a tremendous game, went out there, dominated. And can Blake Bortles win his second Offensive Player of the Week? Stay tuned to the end to find out. Now, given the offensive offense's final grade, uh, we're definitely going to give the offense an A this week. They went out there. That Jets defense is pretty all right. Uh, you know, it sucks because I look at Jamal Adams. He had 10 tackles on the day. Jamal Adams is part of that Jets defense. He's such a good player. Such a good player. So talented. Has such a bright future in this league, but he's just on such a bad team. It's so hard to watch. But this Jags offense uh, with handling Jamal Adams in the New York Jets defense, I'm giving them an A-. minus. They had a tremendous, tremendous game. Uh, the only thing preventing them from getting an A-plus is the fact that uh, the offensive line kind of struggled. And the fact that there were some stupid turnovers that I didn't really address and I kind of just thought about now. Uh, Blake threw another tipped interception, which you imagine that. He throws a lot of those. TJ Yeldon got stripped. You know, just, a, just some garbage time turnovers that, you know, are really preventable. And if we do those in tight games, we lose those games. So, uh, can't be doing that. But the offensive as a whole, A- minus for the offense. Now let us discuss the defensive side of the ball. In my opinion, the most locked down defense in the league. Um, they've only allowed four touchdowns uh, all season long. Uh, the Jets managed to get one of those touchdowns. And then I think... God, the other 
Did the Giants? Okay, the Giants scored one and New England scored one. So, or two? I don't know. But, you know, the thing is we didn't allow one against Tennessee. You know, this defense is just the definition of a, just a shutdown defense. This defense isn't right now. It, it, like, from last year, last year was defense of, like, strategy was so much different. Last year was big plays, big turnovers, you know, scoring on the defensive side of the ball. This year, it's protecting the field goal line, you know, the field, like, making sure teams don't get into field goal range, and you just suck them up, dude. Make, like, just make sure nothing for them is working. Make them struggle. Make them just absolutely hate their life, because they can't get anything going at all. Uh, not really causing turnovers, because we haven't caused a lot of turnovers this season. Uh, and, you know... Just that type of defense is the defense we're running now, and I love it. it. I love it. I think it makes teams more angry than it does when you turn the ball over every play. Like, it's just so fucking hilarious to see teams just get out of their zone because they can't run more than 30 yards the whole entire game because our defense is just just so crazy. Just, you know, making sure that nothing happens. You know, making sure you don't get in range to score and making sure you don't score points. That's the defense we have. Um, so first and foremost, we're going to be talking about the linebackers, and uh, we'll try and uh, transition from the linebackers to the defensive line about something else that I want to talk about. But Miles Jack and Telvin Smith had themselves a day again, leading in tackles with four apiece. Miles Jack continues to be a leader of this defense. Miles Jack and Telvin Smith, two of the best linebackers in the league right now, uh, one of the best linebacker duos in the league as well, just out there doing their thing making plays they're playing fast they're all over the field whether that play be 20 yards down the field three yards in the backfield or right at the line of scrimmage you know these linebackers are out there making plays miles jack and telvin smith that's just the type of players that they are and they're they are fun to watch with that being said it's hard to even give them a grade less than a b ever in a week but this week we're gonna give them an a i think telvin smith and miles jack's leadership is definitely underrated um, though their play on the field is tremendous, their leadership is that much better. They go out there, they lead this team, they make sure that everybody's in the right position, and uh, I think this week was really where that showed, is that their uh, their leadership ability this week um, is what showed the most in this uh, game against the Jets. Now, what I was going to say when transitioning into the defensive line is that we were stuffing the run game, and that was partially linebackers and partially the defensive line. The defensive line, man, give everybody on the D-line a hand. They were hitting Sam Darnold. They were making Sam Darnold's life a living hell out there, making sure that he was struggling every single down, making sure that he couldn't get comfortable. Um, Malik Jackson had a sack. Barry Church also had a sack. And um, Yannick Ngakwe finally got his first sack of the season. Hello, there we go. Told you that that was going to happen. Also said Jalen or AJ was going to get their first pick this game, but that didn't happen, unfortunately. But Yannick Ngakwe got his first sack. This defensive line just stuffed the run game, dude. There was absolutely nowhere to go for Bilal Powell. Like, he was just, he was just back in the backfield, couldn't find anywhere. I don't think they had a... Like, a long run. Like, I don't even think, like, their longest run might have been, like, five yards. Like, this defensive line, you know, they know that last year our rush defense wasn't that great. And right now, it's not that great compared to our other uh, stats that we're leading in. Um, we're ninth in rush defense, which is still fucking top ten. But, I mean, like, we're number one in almost every other category. So, you know, that, that was something that the Jags and Todd Wash, I think, knew that we needed to improve was the run defense. And I think that's something that they have definitely improved on with the defensive line. Todd Wash, you know, everybody's just making sure that uh, we can stop the run game and everything can be successful um, in the long run. So with that being said, the defensive line's going to get an A. Clays Campbell as well, he showed out. He always does. He always he got the safety. Him and Marcel Darius combined for the safety. Marcel Darius had a good game today too. Uh, he was in there making plays left and right. Um, this defensive line as a whole is a special, special unit, especially with how deep we are. I always say our backup four could be a starting four anywhere else in the NFL. Um, there's just tons of talent on this defensive line. You know, we're out there making plays, and, you know, it's it's so fun to watch. It's so fun to watch these uh, big defensive linemen go out there and make plays. Now we're going to talk about the secondary. The secondary had Sam Darnold looking so confused. That guy was out there overthrowing people, underthrowing people, 
just not even throwing to people, throwing it in the dirt, like throwing it away. Like, and he was trying to pick on Tyler Patman, but Tyler Patman, my boy, was second in the team in tackles, and he stepped up. You know, I've always had faith in Tyler Patman. Tyler Patman's been my dog since the uh, preseason started. You know, I've always thought, this kid's got something special. He's got something. And he was out there chirping with Quincy and Numa and uh, Robbie Anderson as well. He was out there just chirping, chirping away. And then, you know, Jalen and AJ both had a pick in their hands, and they both dropped it. You know, they both shut their guy down, like, all game long, which is what else do you expect from these two all-pro corners? Um, J- ah, fuck, it was A.J. Boye has allowed zero touchdowns and over 700 uh, regular season snaps. So that's a crazy, crazy stat. This whole secondary balled. Uh, Barry Church, of course, got the sack. These uh, cornerbacks really made Sam Darnold look confused. And, you know, when you got a quarterback looking confused, that's when the pass rush gets him, and that's what happens. So... Today, that secondary gets an A as well. Just an overall great effort. This is one of the most, just the best overall game the Jags have had in a long, long time. Just an overall, absolute, dominant effort on both sides of the ball. Now, the defensive final grade. And this one's going to be easy. We're going to be giving them an A as well. Like I said, this is one of the better overall games the Jags have ever had that I've ever seen. The offense played well. The defense played well as well. You know, uh, I think the offense just outshines the defense just a little bit because, you know, Blake Bortles' game. This is exactly how the New England game was. You know, just Blake Bortles having a great game usually kind of takes uh, a lot of the spotlight off of the uh, defense. But I don't think it should be because, you know, his defense always plays well. His defense is the best in the league. And, you know, they're going to go up against a Kansas City team next week and really test that young quarterback, Patrick Mahomes. And it should be a fun game to watch. Now it's time for every single person in the building's favorite time of the week. It is the players of the week for special teams, offense, and defense. Let's start things off with the easy one, special teams. We are going to be giving that award to Josh Lambeau. Josh Lambeau, again, getting this award. He is currently uh, beating out uh, punter Logan Cook for that honor. Uh, I'm waiting for Jane on Mickens to return a kick to the house so he can take over and uh, get his name on the board for the special team player of the week. But as for now, Josh Lambeau is killing it. Like I said, he's made all 23 field goals since he's came to the Jags, which is insane. That's a streak and a half. And I want to know. I want to know if that's a record. Like I want to know how many field goals in a row Scobie ever made because like that's that's a lot of field goals to make in a row. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Now let's talk about the offensive. MVP player of the week. We are going to be giving it to T. Blair. We're going to give it to D.D. Westbrook. Though D.D. Westbrook did not have a touchdown on the day, he had 130 yards, career high. It was a career game for that young man. And just he went out there, balled out, had a game of his life. And he definitely, without a doubt, deserves the honor of player of the week. There's a lot of people on the offensive side of the ball that you could have gave this award to. But I think that, uh, with all due respect, I think D.D. Westbrook just deserved it a little bit more. And now we're going to go over to the defensive side of the ball. The defensive side of the ball is interesting because you got a lot of guys that went out there, made some plays, and uh, did some things for the team. And, you know, it's a hard, it's a hard one to pick. I want to pick somebody on the defensive line. I also kind of want to pick somebody in the secondary. And, um, you know what, I think I'm going to pick... Clayce Campbell. I think Clayce Campbell went out there and he had a great game. I don't think he registered a sack uh, in that game, but that safety was a huge play for us. And he went out there, proved that he's the leader of the team. So Clayce Campbell getting defensive player of the week for week four against the New York Jets. Congratulations to everybody. And that was my week four Jaguars versus Jets week four recap. Uh, position grades and players of the week what you guys think leave your comments down below don't forget to check the links down below as well don't forget to like me on facebook at tree talks follow me on twitter at trevin pixley and follow me on instagram at trayvon pixley don't forget to hit that subscribe button click the bell icon so you get notified every single time i drop a new video i drop new jaguar content on this channel six days a week ain't nobody outworking me dems are just straight facts thank you guys so much for watching this video and as always you guys have a great day